years, two or three years before I finally bought a Rode NT1. And that's because, honestly, I didn't really like the sound of it. I, I, I felt the treble was like a little bit shrill, a little bit lumpy, a little bit harsh, a little bit ravaged. It just didn't sound very smooth and transparent in the high frequencies. It felt like it, it had a dark spot in it, like there was a cut, and, you know, there was a peak, and it just did not sound as smooth and transparent in the high frequencies. It sounded a little bit off in, in, a, in a pretty jarring way. And if you look at the new Rode NT1s they've been coming out with, like the 5th Gen Rode NT1, like the Signature Series Rode NT1, you know, all these versions of the, the Rode NT1 that they've been coming out with, they started to be a little bit more honest about the frequency response. And, you know, they show you like this treble peak and, you know, it kind of dips down around like 3, 4, 5K and then it kind of goes back up. Uh, you know, they show you a little bit, you know, that it's not that flawless, it's not that perfect. Um, you know, it does have ultra-low self-noise, um, which is really good. Equivalent self-noise, 4.5 dBA, that's actually exceptionally good. Um, the sensitivity is actually not that good, to be honest with you, for a condenser. It needs 29 decibels of gain. A lot of condenser microphones only need like 25 decibels of gain. So 29 is actually, it's a little bit gain hungry, to be honest with you. But 4.5 equivalent noise is really good. Um, that's uh, a, a, a signal to noise. Signal to noise up here. Signal to noise. 90 dBA. That's exceptionally good. So, you know, for ASMR, the Rode NT1 is actually pretty good. <laughs> but for spoken word, you know, I've seen so many people you know, buy this microphone like Booth the Junkie, and then they get rid of it. Because, although it, it sounds good in a lot of ways, you know, it does have a very neutral sound. The high frequencies just sound a little bit off, a little bit roughed up, a little bit, you know, peaks and cuts. There's something going on. And, um, you know, I bought the Rode NT1 like three times. I bought this microphone three times. The first one I bought it and I used it for a while, my immediate reaction was the sibilance was harsh, harsher than I expected. And when I listened to it in a mix, you know, for voiceover and stuff, it, it sounded a little bit harsh in the high frequencies a little bit. I, I felt like I was hearing a dark spot, like there was a cut in the frequency response. Like there was a peak in the frequency response. It just sounded jarring in the high frequencies and it's not shown on the frequency response until recently they started being a little bit more honest if you look very closely there's like a 6k peak and then like a 12 13k peak and again it kind of dips down around like 7k a little bit and i'm sure that's smoothed out as well you know so it doesn't show you just how bad it is but um anyway you may be wondering why I still have one. Well, I don't. I got rid of the Rode NT1. And, um, yeah. It's just now a bunch of cables. It's just a bunch of cables. Um, it's the same with, um, things like, things like, um, the Sennheiser HD600s. These things are marketed, um, for um, sounding extremely flat, extremely transparent, extremely neutral, when that's not actually true. The Sennheiser HD600 um, have extremely poor um, treble extension and bass emphasis. They're actually nothing but mid-range. They, they lack dynamics. They're shouty at 3 and 5 kilohertz. These are another lie, the Sennheiser HD600s. These headphones are a lie. And, um, you know what's funny? You may be wondering why I have some extra cables. 
models for the Sennheiser HD 600s. Well, the Sennheiser HD 600s are known for having a really crappy cable that they come with. And when I bought them within a couple of days, my cat actually bit the cable. This cable, and it, she, she, she ruined the headphone. If she broke the headphone where the cable didn't work anymore. So I contacted Sweetwater, which is why I bought the headphones. And they actually sent me a replacement cable. So this headphone has such a crappy cable that it comes with that it broke immediately when my cat bit the cable once. It just cut right through the cable. Now if you get the Sennheiser HD 650s, they come with a beefier, better cable. But the, the 600s, for whatever reason, still come with these crappy uh, cables that are just weak as shit, to be honest with you. So those headphones were actually extremely fatiguing. There's a sharp 5 kilohertz peak. There's a th 3 kilohertz lump. Above 5 kilohertz, the treble is just ripped out. But there's some treble spikes that make it sound very grainy. So the treble is very low detailed, very dark, very veiled, but there's these treble shards, this grit that, that's still audible, that, that uh, uh, supposedly goes away over time as the pads wear in, uh, which, you know, begins to sound more like an HD 650, which is darker and more dampened in the high frequencies to get rid of that grain, to dampen that 5 kilohertz peak and stuff like that. That's the whole point of the HD 650s and why they're considered darker than the HD 600s. But I just wanted to make this video to say that Rode microphones, honest to God, their shit is terrible. <laughs> you know, I, I just, I just, I just, oh God, there's stickers. Stickers, look at stickers. Stickers, 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 stickers. Yeah, there's, and treble extension. 